Hey ladies and gents, it's Zen back and I'm doing another tactics and tips, but uh, this is actually going to be a little bit about map strategy as well. Um, uh, I got two little videos coming up here. They're going to be relatively short. I think just trying to get this video under 25 minutes because, you know, uh, reasons. So what I'm talking about is is every, not every map is the same and there's certain things you can do on a map that will definitely help you and... and uh, some of the two videos I'm going to be showing you, I'll be showing you a couple different little things uh, that seem to help um, take objectives and to win objectives uh, using just a single fighter, actually. Uh, and, and playing off of the uh, bots, the way the bots operate. You remember the bots that we talked about in the video and how they uh, go to certain objectives and all that stuff and using that to your advantage to turn objectives. So I used, I did a training room here and I, uh, you know, just to make, because of course it's easier to control uh, for me to show you how to do this stuff without having to be scrambling all the time to win games. Uh, so what uh, we're going to talk about here is, and I don't have an actual video of this because I'm going to need to get some more volunteers to do this, uh, but we're going to actually talk about um, respawning and bombers. So, so typically you want a heavy fighter to be able to take on bombers or a multi-role. Life fighters work all right. Um, the problem with this is they don't have the HP and they get the shit kicked out of them. Uh, they lose a lot of health and it's not an easy thing to take out bombers with a light fighter. Uh, and it's not, and, and depending on where you're at, uh, you know, you, you, you've all experienced this before, like three fourths of the bots and the teammates go after the bomber or nobody goes after the bomber. Uh, and, and that leaves you kind of stuck. And this is just a little tip. Um, you know, so, so for example, this map here, your spawn points here, uh, they take a the um, command center here, and you take a command center here. So now their bombers are actually coming down this line. And this is all about, of course, watching the map and reading the map and, and understanding how the bombers are going back and forth, you know, because you always get that red line to know where they're, they're going. Um, you know, for example, this one, there be, there might be a red line here with the bombers coming, starting in the uh, north up here by the command center and heading to this command center. Well, if this happens and say you're over here fighting over uh, this uh, airfield, for example, uh, and you notice the bombers are coming. Now, you do have an airfield here and a spawn point here. Uh, this is one of the map awareness things that you're going to go, okay, uh, I'm way over here. Nobody's pursuing the bombers. We cannot lose the command base. What are we going to do? Uh, it's perfectly fine to take your fighter and crash it right in the fucking water, right? Because that what that does is that respawns you either here or here. Now the bombers start here, and as they work down to the command center, of course you're going to respawn at one of these two points, preferably the airfield. And once you respawn there, uh, guess what? You're at altitude, uh, and it's not a short hop up to to get into the the bomber fight as it's flying toward the command center. Once again, it's just more of a uh, reading the map, understanding how the, the spawn points work, because once you spawn back in, you can, you know, if you own this airfield, for example, you can spawn on that airfield, or you're going to respawn here. Either and or is, is both uh, both all right, and you're going to spawn at altitude with your boost. So now, if you're over here fighting in this airfield, nobody's got the bombers. Guess what? Just crash, uh, or you know, take out as many fighters as you can, and crash, take your 15, 30 seconds, whatever, respawn, uh, and it brings you all the way across the map so you can at least take on this bomber flight so you don't lose your command center. Just a little tip, uh, one of those little things, little tricks to think about as you're playing the games, uh, you know, uh, map awareness of what's going on on the map. Um, you know, This can be used in any, a lot of the maps that have command centers. It's just a matter of watching the bombers and where your airfields are and where your spawn point is compared to that bomber path. Uh, something remember it works really nice with air bases if you have an air base uh, and you're on the other side of the map uh, you can dive in you're in a light fighter smash yourself up jump in grab a heavy fighter and jump back in the battle and get right on those bombers and, and follow them uh, and, and take them out it's a lot easier of course with heavy fighters to do it uh, you know that's just something always to think about when you're playing the, you know playing these games that uh, that ability with that air base uh, to to change planes uh, and give you a, uh, a place to start from uh, closer to the bombers, you know, if you're on the other side of the map uh, and nobody's going after the bombers. It's, it's always fucking hit and miss. Uh, sometimes you have all the bots and human players chasing bombers, and other times it just kind of strolls along and does its own fucking thing. So, something to remember. 
uh, I'm going to be bringing the two videos I'm going to do. Uh, like I said, this is just a little tip. I didn't have a time to do this actual uh, scenario in a map or an actual fight or training room because I didn't have any volunteers right now. So, uh, but the two ones I did, I was able to do by myself. So I'm going to bring those up for you guys uh, and kind of explain uh, what's going on uh, as we uh, play the training room. So, hey guys, back with the first little video on tips and tricks uh, and map awareness. Really, this it's amazing how much map awareness, even in this game, uh, is just as important as in World of Warships, World of Tanks, uh, and that's understanding how, how everything's working here. So what we got here is I'm running a P-51 here, and I'm going to do a little bit here about taking a objective by yourself. Um, you have to remember is that every one of these objectives, uh, the planes are going to be circling in a circle, right? They circle around and around. Um, I typically, when I go to these objectives, I don't want to be the first airplane. If I have some airplanes with me, I don't want to be the first airplane into the objective. Uh, for a reason, because that's when the AA starts targeting you and the bots target you, right? So I tend to have to just hang out just a little bit on the outside, let my bots get in there and start engaging, uh, and then worry about it. So now in this situation, I have no bots with me, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm getting the lay of the land. I'm not going to get in the circle. I'm not going to get sh uh, the shot, shit shot out of me. Uh, granted, I'm at over 4,000 feet. Remember we did the I did the video on the AA? Uh, being this is an air base... It's lightly defended. doesn't have any high-altitude uh, AA guns. So I know if I stay up above 3,500 feet, roughly, uh, the low-altitude guns uh, can't, can't hit me. Uh, so I will not get any AA here. So what I'm doing here is, okay, at this point, my whatever air, if there was airplanes with me, they would already be in, inside the circle and engaging those targets. Uh, what I'm looking at is, of course, you can see that the, the bots are swirling around... Uh, in a circle right here and if this was a heavily contested area say with heavy AAs if I fly in here and they're circling away from me that just longer for AA to shoot at me here so what I'm doing here is just kind of catching the edges right here and I'm trying to essentially bait these guys over to me right um, I know there's gonna be some heavy fighters up high and I know I have light fighters here so, you know, once I bait them in here, now, of course, you can see those white markers all start turning toward me. And I'm just kind of baiting them here. Uh, and I pull back out. So he's not going to pursue me outside of that objective, which lets me come right back in on him and get relatively close to his tail here. Flip over. And now these guys have all come over here, right? Uh, I didn't have to chase them all the way across the cap to catch them. Uh, you know, tip, it's always every time you get right in here, they always do the same thing. They always seem like they circle and they start heading toward the other side of the objective. Uh, this way, by catching that edge, I brought them to my side and it allows me to at any moment, if I really get into trouble, I can dip out of that objective uh, and get out of here. So now this is just, uh, and this is actually a little bit of a tactic if you're going to have to take an objective by yourself and you have to take all of these light fighters or all these fighters on by yourself. See, I'm still playing at the edge right here. Uh, if I had to, uh, I was getting swarmed, uh, I can dip out. See, the, those objective, the defense fighters kind of lost interest, uh, and they're, sw they're, they're swirling again, right? So I can start kind of picking them off a little bit one at a time. Um, you know, I know the heavy fighters are coming back to take a pass at me, uh, and you're going to see me dip back underneath him, and I'm going to start picking once again. Um, he's going to make a pass, and I'm waiting for him to drop down below me, and there he is. So now I don't have to deal with him at altitude. Uh, he's got himself kind of at a disadvantage here. So I can punish him pretty hard for it. At the same time with all the swirling, now of course I have the other light fighters coming back here again. Uh, they've swirled back away. I'm still at the edge. It still lets me get away if I have to. I can get out of this situation by just pointing myself away and getting out of the objective circle. So um, he ran off. This gives me a chance to work with this P-40 here. And, it, and it's simply more of just, you know, the map awareness and sitting here and watching the swirls of how these guys are, are moving, you know. And all the time, I'm staying relatively close to this edge because I can, like I said, I've, I can get away then. Uh, and this is kind of how to do this objective, uh, take an objective if you have to by yourself. You know, you don't, sometimes you have to take an objective and you don't have much choice. 
and you have to get in there and you don't have any support and you're going to be up against six uh, air defense fighters, uh, this is a little bit of a tactic to help you guys uh, get how this works. So I knock him out. I only need one more plane, right? And I'm waiting here, I'm waiting here, I'm waiting here. Uh, and I finally get one that's coming in behind me. And I swirl around and try to pick him back up here. And I'm always looking for the one that's going to be closest to me. So you always got to be constantly watching. Lowest one to me, lowest HP. Uh, and of course this one because I only need one to flip the cap. So that's objectives by yourself. Uh, just tips too of how to enter objectives and how to deal with some of that kind of stuff. Now what we're going to do talk about is deny. All right. We're always, you know, we're always thinking about getting objective, get objective, get objective, take the objective, take the objective. But what we're going to do here is call a, a denial, or, or I just call it deny. Uh, we're going to deny the enemy team uh, a, a, a objective, and this is this is one of those deals about the bots. Uh, we always know where GAs are going to go. They're going to go mining camps. They're going to go command centers, that kind of stuff. That's the bots. We know humans are always a kind of a wild card here, but we know where the bots are going to go. So I know <coughs> that that GA, typically only GAs go over there. You might get a heavy fighter on occasion. And of course, you're always going to, you know, there might be uh, a human one over here too. So one the objective, um, I'm not terribly worried about it now, but you know how mining plants work. It's, all, it's wor worth double objectives. So I want to deny this objective to them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come here on the JU-88. Uh, he's been bombing away here, and you can do this. Th this works really well with a multi-roll if you if you have a if you have a multi-roll in this situation, because the multi-rolls do a real nice job of taking out ground attack planes. Uh, but since I brought a P-51 in here, I should have bought a you know F-4U or you know Super Corsair or something like that with some uh, rockets of bombs. So I knock him out. I'm denying him this cap. And what I'm looking for here is I'm going through here is I'm looking for any th of these. Uh, uh, ground targets that are partially destroyed and this is where the multi-roll comes in into play right here so if I come through here I luckily unfortunately nothing was uh, only partially damaged so it didn't help me out but if you if you're in a G if you're in a multi-roll and you come in here and say he's only got half of this destroyed right here and you're able to turn that that just helps you more uh, toward taking the actual objective and see what I'm gonna do here is gonna, I'm gonna wait because I know how bots operate that's GA is going to continue to come back to this objective uh, until he gets it. So, and this works really nice if there's two of them, uh, two bots. Say so you tight, so you knocked out both bots, uh, which turns it even you know further back to blue for you. Uh, and then when they come again, you knock them out. Uh, it's a relatively easy way for a light fighter or even a heavy fighter, or a multi roll. Multi-roll heavy fighter probably makes this this job a little bit easier uh, to take an objective like this and, and not be a GA. Uh, you're just simply denying this mining plant to the enemy. So the J88, I, JU88, I know is going to be back. Uh, you know, just hanging out right here. I know he's going to come back, and that's what I'm waiting for. Like I said, it, it works nice if there's two or even three GAs, uh, or even if there's a bomber up above. Uh, and they're all bots, uh, you know, that's that's three easy uh, 40 points. You know, that's 120 points just by knocking those three out. So here comes the JU-88. Uh, and, you know, one plane can do this really easily. I, you know, like I said, a heavy fighter and multi-roll probably work best because the multi-roll, you can still be pounding targets. Uh, but you're simply waiting here for this nice, juicy 40, uh, 40 points to come back in here so you can knock them out and help you turn this cap uh, without taking a whole bunch of damage because you know uh, we've talked about in other videos uh, it's a mining plant so if you stay below uh, 4,000 feet the the AA won't can't hit you because this is only has heavy AA so this is another like I said another little tip and tactic uh, to think about uh, as you play the game and, and, and you know get to understand a little bit more so I got another video coming up for the rest of it and I'll be bringing it up to right about now all right, guys, back with the second video uh, in this little uh, maps, tactics, and tricks. And once again, running on the P-51. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use uh, a little bit of everything here. I'm going to, you know, the what we talked about, taking objectives by yourself in the last one, using the stupidity of the bots uh, to take objectives. The other thing I'm going to do is use or, or show you... Uh, how to use these objectives 
to the fullest. In this case, it's going to be a military base with the rockets, right? So what I'm looking at here is I know that there's going to be a uh, heavy bar. I put a heavy fighter in here, and I know where the heavy fighter is going to go in this situation. They're going to go to the uh, command center. They're a bot. That's typically where they go. So what I'm doing here is, you know, you can play this off however you want to, or you can, of course, play it like the last map where I took the objective without the heavy fighter. <coughs> but what I'm doing here is I'm going to use my that heavy fighter to my advantage. <coughs> Excuse me. Heavy fighter comes in, and guess who's on their tail? The two, um, the two defense fighters. Uh, that enemy red and these two uh, heavy fighters here are going to have a tendency to go around each other. Uh, so that P-38J left the objective area. So that leaves me a chance to take off this P-38. He made a pass at me, uh, missed, lets me get on his tail. So now, once again, I'm using that bot uh, as bait, essentially. So these two P-38s are going to try to kill each other. Uh, he's going to go after that P-38 because that's what bots do. Remember in the bot video I talked about that? They will actually ignore you uh, while you are uh, killing them uh, because they're more interested in taking out the defense fighters. So this P-38 right here, I got him. And now the nice thing about bots is once you start nailing them, they will spin off. So see, he's out of the objective. I'm not going to deal with him. I got He's not worth the points. So flip back over on this P-38. I'm going to nail him before he uh, decides to turn on me. The other P-38 has uh, wandered off. He's actually back in the objective, so he's going to be worth points when I do kill him. So here he comes. He's almost mostly dead. Flip back up over, and it's just a matter of finishing him off to win my objective. Of course, like I said, we watch, I watched the other videos. You know what I was talking about. Uh, command centers usually only typically have two planes over them, so you need a little bit more than two planes to take the objective. And this is what I'm talking about with the uh, tips and tactics uh, using your enemy bots to flip objectives. Now, we got that taken care of. Now, here's some of the things about command centers. Of course, we have a rocket that goes off every 9 seconds, or every 10 seconds, I'm sorry. And you have to be paying attention to where that rocket's landing. Um, I think it takes six, rocket, 6 or 7 rockets to turn an objective. So about 60 to 70 seconds for this military base to take that objective over there. So what I'm doing here is simply just waiting, right? He's going to launch every 10 seconds. Uh, and this is the easiest way to take an enemy objective without using a, without losing a bunch of HP and a uh, chance of losing your plane, uh, is using the command centers to your, uh, to your benefit here. So I got rockets incoming. He's got another one in a few seconds. Here it comes. And I arrive, and it's, this is all about timing. I arrive just as his rocket's coming in here. He just, lay it, uh, he just landed one. I only have to take out one plane, flip the objective. Easy peasy, right? So it's just a matter of paying attention to your command centers uh, to take other objectives. So now I know he's going to switch targets. Of course, by now, there's probably a huge red blob. Everybody's fighting over this thing right here, which is fine. Uh, they can fight back and forth over it, but I'm just going to use this object. I'm going to use this military base as long as I can to take other objectives. So now he's switched targets, the military base switched targets. He's already dropped one missile on that airfield. So that's my next objective that I want to take. So out I go, back I go, and I'm just, like I said, gonna loiter here a little bit and wait till that thing turns roughly, you know, half to three quarters before I dive back down in there uh, to take out, you know, one or two planes is all I'm gonna need to take that objective. And, and that's just, you know, uh, just a little tip and uh, to think about, uh, you know, to take objectives, it's best to use your own objectives to help you out here. So come in here. I'm a little too low here. You know, airfields only got light, light AA, so I should have been up above about 4,000 feet, and I wouldn't have to worry about AA. Uh, but I'm doing the video, so fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I make mistakes. I get it, I get it. So, coming on the P-40, so now we only need, I only need one more rocket or one more plane, and I'll be flipping this, uh, flipping of this objective. Yeah, that's how easy it is. 
And, you know, and this is just, like I said, just some simple tips and tactics to help you, uh, you know, uh, not only perform better, but to win more games. You know, I'm still fucking learning at this game. And even, even you know, we've all played this game, and I'm still in the learning process of trying to get all this stuff figured out. You know, I spend more time trying different stupid shit to try to see if I can make it work uh, than actually doing some of the stuff I'm actually talking about in the video. <laughs> but some of this stuff, like stuff, you know, I've worked through, you know, and it seems to work for the most part, uh, you know, trying to win games. And, of course, this all cuffs can get blown out of the windows. You can score 14,000 combat points and still lose. You know, it's it's one of those deals, and I'm not even going to go into the RNG and the bots and all that kind of bullshit. But, you know, you guys are kind of following me here with some of these tips and the, some of these tactics uh, and tips that I'm trying to give you guys. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys out, uh, and it gives you guys a little bit better understanding how the game is played. So, you guys have a good night. I'm going to be gone for uh, Christmas for like four or five days. So, hopefully I'm going to have a couple more videos up here yet for you guys uh, in the next couple of days before I leave. So, you guys have a good night, and thanks for watching.